Good morning and welcome to Morning Prayer for St. John's Lutheran Church of McGuanago for Wednesday, November 16. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Hasten to save me, O God. O Lord, come quickly to help me. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. Be merciful to me, Lord, for I am faint. O Lord, heal me, for my bones are in agony. Turn, O Lord, and deliver me. Save me because of your unfailing love. Jesus said to his disciples, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. We continue our reading of 1 Corinthians 10, verses 14 to 22. Therefore, my beloved, free from idolatry, I speak as to sensible people. Judge for yourselves what I say. The cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. Consider the people of Israel are not those who eat the sacrifices, participants in the altar. What do I imply then? That food offered to idols is anything, or that an idol is anything? No, I imply that what pagans sacrifice they offer to demons and not to God. I do not want you to be participants with demons. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the table of the Lord and the table of demons. Shall we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? The word of the Lord. Just a couple of things at the outset. I just love how Paul still addresses a troubled congregation, and he calls them, My beloved, that pastoral heart just beats through for them. He also writes as if to sensible people. I think I mentioned in uh, Sunday's Bible class, I, that's how I should start my sermon. I, I speak to you who are sensible. You know, uh, Paul writes to sensible people. And his point is just pretty clear in, in this section. It's that you shouldn't have a place at, at the Lord's table and at the table of demons. And this seems to be like, well, duh, St. Paul. And yet, as I mentioned in yesterday's devotion, so I'll reiterate again, um, the first commandment on paper looks rather simple, easy, and clear, and yet we struggle with it. I commend to you for your reading uh, Luther's uh, large catechism on the first commandment, and, and it's just a great review. But if that is true, that uh, you shouldn't be with demons and, and at the Lord's table at the same time, then what is it about the Lord's table that is so incredible? Um, I'll ask the question in this way. There are any number of ways to answer the question, why come to the Lord's Supper? What is the blessing of the Lord's Supper? What is happening at the Lord's Supper? But because we're studying 1 Corinthians 10, I want you to answer it from these verses. Verse 16, the cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? And the bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. What is Holy Communion according to these verses? It is a participation in the body and blood of Christ, which means, of course, that the body and blood of Christ are really there. They're really present. It's a participation. It's a fellowship. It's a it's a sharing. It's it's a joining with. And and while there is certainly time to emphasize the horizontal dimension of communion, those who you share communion with, the one loaf, um, in these verses a sharing, a communion, emphasizing the vertical relationship. You couldn't climb to heaven, so he comes down to you. He comes down to you, the same one wrapped in swaddling claws and lying in a manger, the same one who had to fle flee to Egypt when he was a, just a boy for his life, the one 
who learned in the temple when he was 12, and the one who changed water into wine and walked on water and healed diseases and cast out demons and raised the dead. This is the one who is present for you on this altar, a participation, a sharing, a joining with the body and blood of Christ. He puts his holy body and holy blood into you to knock the death right out of you. To say sin and Satan, you can't have this one. No, I. they belong to me. What grace is this and what joy is ours as we gather around this table, as we gather for a participation in the body and blood of Christ. Uh, more on why that doesn't mix well with demons. More on why that doesn't play well with idols um, in the next two days' devotions. But for your comfort today, I speak to sensible people that the body and blood of Jesus Christ are here from the altar for you. This is, this is one of the reasons we gather regularly, faithfully, to receive such a blessing. A blessing undeserved to be sure, but a blessing which promises strength on the way that leads to your heavenly home. In the name of Jesus, amen. In the morning, O Lord, I call to you. Be merciful to me and hear my prayer. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God and Savior, you have set the final day and hour when we shall be delivered from this world of sin and death. Keep us ever watchful for the coming of your Son, that we may sit with him and all your holy ones at the marriage feast in heaven. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you've brought us safely to this new day. Defend us with your mighty power and grant that this day we neither fall into sin nor run into any kind of danger. And in all we do, direct us to what is right in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.
as one, unite in spirit and ideals. Never be rivals, do not be conceited, but look to others in their